So for this video, uh, this is kind of like a little bit of like a beginner subject. So if you've been playing for a long time and whatnot, you might want to watch it just for your own benefit. But at the same time, like this is really something that's more or less for the beginner that's just learning how to play. Um, typically, when you're playing, like you want to try and like be able to jam with friends and some of that, and that requires you to be able to play for longer extents of time. Uh, so. One of the things that you'll always hear instructors say, and it is really important to try and do, is to stay relaxed. Uh, and being relaxed for me means, like, for me, it's like an entire body kind of thing. But they, they're really focusing on like your hands and your wrists and stuff like that. It's really important to kind of keep that like straight wrist uh, for your left hand, but then also like your right hand. You want to try and let, or your your plucking hand if you're lefty and whatnot. Things are going to be reversed for you. But like you want to still even keep that relaxed and whatnot. There's so many students. I've had and like just people in general I've seen playing are very tense um, and the problem with that is you're expelling a lot of energy just staying tense like that so like we're trying to prevent that by just keeping a relaxed approach and one of the ways you can kind of um, reinforce this to kind of make sure that it happens for you when you're like learning and when you're practicing is by having your instrument set up correctly uh, there's lots of people out there that are playing with action that's like half an inch or higher uh, action on their on their instruments and when you're playing bass like it does take a lot more effort than like an electric guitar to uh, fret the strings and uh, we're not talking about like upright where it takes a lot more hand strength electric bass it should be fairly like effortless you know when you're playing like uh, it should it should just uh, start to flow with the notes and stuff like that especially when you have a like, decent hand strength and when you've been building a proper technique Having a good setup will bring the string action down low enough to where you're not expelling more than enough energy to make sure that you're playing the notes efficiently. Um, and also that helps with playing faster and more complicated lines and just all in all your, your entire dexterity in your hands. Uh, ways you can kind of do this is, well, one, you could obviously go to a shop and have them give you a setup. Um, it'll be done more, more or less uh, professionally and it'll be a really nice setup, I'm sure, but you're also going to probably spend anywhere between $50 to $80 on like a setup, depending on where you go and who the person is that's giving it uh, the setup. So one of the things I would recommend doing is actually learning how to do your own setups and by doing that like uh, to, you'll you'll learn a lot more about your instrument and you'll have a lot more control and it'll save your, your wallet some uh, some cash for sure. Um, a couple ways to kind of like fix uh, high action or just to be able to like to be able to stay more relaxed when you're playing is just pay attention to how high the string is over top of certain frets. If you notice that like down towards like the bottom of the neck here, it's it's pretty easy to play and the string action isn't that high, but as you go up higher, the string action becomes really high and like you can't really like it, it takes a lot more effort to fret down those notes. That is something that's more or less uh, with your truss rod, where you're going to have to tighten your truss rod. And you can just check this by simply just giving it a little little push with the back of your heel, just kind of giving it a little push like that. I usually grab it somewhere right around here on the neck, but somewhere between like one and three, like with the frets. And then I just kind of give it a little tiny push to kind of see, and I'm watching over top of this like seven to nine fret area. For any kind of like wiggle room, if like if I see the neck is moving a lot, uh, then that's where I might tighten it down a little bit because I want to just try and get it lined up to where it's parallel with the strings. I, I want the same string height from my first fret all the way up to my twentieth fret. I want this. I want it to stay the same. That is a really really uh, great way to kind of improve your playing. And like I've had people co come over and I gave them like simple setups before, and they were like shocked by just how much energy they were expelling into being able to play notes before that they never realized because the string action was all messed up. Uh, so besides that, like if, if you're having problems where like you're getting buzzing or something like that, that's going the opposite direction really. Let's say, let's say your neck is straight and you don't have any problems with the actual string height 
for most of the neck. Uh, but overall, it's just a little bit too high. Well, there's a couple things you could do in that situation where down at your bridge, the saddles, that's where you want to lower them. Just And what I do is I go like like a half turn like with each one of the nuts. If there's two like little tiny Allen key holes for like each one of the saddles, I will go through and I will lower each one a half turn. Pl uh, make, tune the instrument, play it, see how it feels. Make sure that none of my notes in the upper register are buzzing. Uh, and then you also want to just make sure you're checking your intonation as you're doing this as well. This is another important thing. There's a lot that goes into this, but the more you do your own research and the more you learn about how to do your own setups, the more money you're going to save and you're going to have better control as to what your instruments are going to feel like. I love playing every single one of my basses because of the fact that I have them set up exactly how I like to play them. Now, let's say you lower the saddles and you're still having issues with the lower frets down here with string action or the string height, then that's a problem with your nut where like the, the nut might be a little bit too high in which case you'll have to learn how to sand that down. There's videos on how to do that. If you're new to it, I would highly recommend, if, if the nut is the problem, take it to a shop and let them do it, okay? Because it would be a real problem if uh, you went through and you tried to uh, sand it down, you sand it down too far. Well, you, once you sand too much off, it's done. You have to get a new nut. So try your best to um, avoid that and fix it everywhere else if possible. But that's like some really simple tips for being able to fix the action and make your playing a lot more effortless. And overall, you're gonna have a lot more fun playing because you're not trying so hard to like get the to fret the notes. Now it's going to be much easier, and you're going to enjoy the time you have playing. So I hope you found this informative and useful for you. Um, if you have any questions, shoot me a message. Uh, if you like the video, give it a, a like and make sure you subscribe. I really appreciate it, guys. Take care.